announcement. <laughs> All right, we are here with another Kickstarter interview for the Zombies Need Brains Triumvirate of Anthologies. We're here with David B. Coe, and he is going to be editing the anthology Noir. And here is the description. Since the days of Raymond Chandler and Dorothy B. Hughes, Dashiell Hammett and Mickey Spillane, the down but not quite out private eye, the gumshoe, Seamus, Dick, Sleuthhound, Beagle, Skip Tracer, has been an archetype of literature and cinema. Moreover, some of the most memorable of these hard-boiled lone investigators have lived in the pages of fantasy and science fiction. Whether in the filthy lanes of an ancient magical city or the sterile corridors of a lonely outpost in space, there are always crimes to be solved and detectives needing a few bucks to make their rent or buy their next bottle of bourbon. In this anthology, we invite writers to spin their webs of mystery and deceit in the noir voice. All right, David, what what drew you to the noir anthology? Well, I love detective stories. Uh, and I've written uh, a bunch of series that are kind of urban fantasies and built around mysteries and stuff. So this was a pretty good fit for me uh, when Joshua was pitching the, his various anthology ideas for this year's crop to his pool of editors. Uh, this was a one that caught my eye and uh, he kind of shunted me toward it because he, I, I have a series in particular, the Thief Taker Chronicles, which is a right. urban fantasy set in pre-revolutionary Boston. And I've written at least half a dozen Thief Taker stories for Zombies Need Brains, including uh, anthologies that I've edited myself and I've, I've had my stories in them. And so, it was, it was a good match from the start. Uh, and we have a new editor, uh, John Zakor is my co-editor on this and he hasn't edited for Zombies Need Brains before. So uh, this is my first time being the lead editor, being the senior editor, I should right. say. Um, and, and that's kind of exciting to me. And I wanted that and Joshua is, is working on at least one of the others. So this was, it was gonna be a challenge. It was right up my alley in terms of the literary stuff. And I love detective stuff. Awesome. I, I, I love detective movies. I Sam Spade, Raymond Chandler stuff. Um, it's, this was just a great fit for me. Awesome. So you, this is not your first anthology uh, edited for Zombies Need Brains. And so you know by now what really makes something stand out in the slush pile. Will you Absolutely. talk a little bit about kind of how, how can people achieve that goal? How can they make their manuscript leap like a salmon out of the slush pile? Yeah, that's a great question. I've done, uh, this is going to be my fourth an anthology. I did, uh, I guess, uh, Derelict, this past one, which was about stranded ships, spaceships, sea ships. Uh, I did one called Galactic Stew that was focused on food. Uh, I did one called Temporally uh, Deactivated, which was kind of about... Um, mechanisms failing to work and 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 dying on the spot and stuff like that and again and again the things that joshua and i found in those submission pools were stories that surprised us I mean, let's face it with noir we're going to get tons and tons of space station mysteries people on space stations you know stranded on space stations and a detective there having to solve a mystery that can't easily be explained. Or we're going to get kind of the, the gum, the fantasy gumshoe in a city with kind of tongue in cheek uh, elves and dwarves. I mean, we're going to get, there are certain archetypical stories we're just going to get and that's fine. We'll publish one or two of each of those. But what we find is two things. One voice matters. And if it's just another detective story, but there's no uniqueness to the narrator's voice, chances are we're going to feel about it that it's just another detective mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I tell people to do is really try to come up with a point of view character who is going to catch our interest, who's going to make us say, oh, that's something I haven't seen before. So that's first. And then the second bit of advice that I would offer is 
and this is something actually Joshua said when he and I were on a panel together talking about uh, one of the anthologies at a convention. And he said something that really struck true to me. And that was sometimes your first idea isn't your best idea. Uh -huh. yeah. Because sometimes that first idea is the first idea that's going to occur to everyone. And it's when you delve a little deeper into your imagination and, and, and take that first idea and play with it a little bit and think, okay, how can I make that really different? How can I take what seems obvious to me and make it so that it's not gonna be obvious to anyone? And when you start delving deeper into the ideas, scratching the surface a little more, taking that first idea and developing it and turning it into something truly unique, that's when you're gonna get our attention. Right. We have, generally speaking, a pool of about 500 stories come in for, the, for each of these anthologies. We have seven slots. Getting into our anthologies is harder than getting into Harvard. And so you really need to look for ways to make your story stand out. And, and that means being creative, thinking outside of your comfort zone a little bit. Um, and again, going with a point of view character who is going to surprise and move and, and tweak our curiosity. Uh, so those are the things I would, I would point Perspective writers toward. Awesome. So, is there anything in particular that you're looking for in the noir? Anything you're, or anything you're hoping not to see? Like, oh God, not <laughs> Scooby Doo retelling, or? Well, I'm hoping that you know, 200 of those 500 stories aren't space station mysteries. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, I think coming up with, the key is going to be the detective, obviously. I mean, when you start talking about noir stories, your, your detective is, is your reader's entryway into the story. He or she or they are going to be the, the tour guide mm -hmm. for whatever world you set it in, for whatever mystery you set up. And so I'd love to see non-traditional outside the box uh, detectives. Uh, detectives who are themselves um, maybe supernatural creatures, maybe not humans investigating the supernatural, but supernatural themselves. Mm -hmm. Or I would love to see, love, love, love to see just non-traditional, not white guys investigating crimes and reacting to the the winsome ingenue who shows up in their office. I think, I think it's fun to play with that and maybe turn it on its head. But if I'm looking at Bogey responding to Bacall, well, I've seen that. And, and frankly, Bogey and Bacall did it really well and I don't need to see it done again. Yeah. But if there's a way to turn those expectations around and make the, the protagonist not necessarily what we've grown to expect, that's going to catch our eye. That's going to make us sit up and take notes. Awesome. Oh, okay. So I know that you're looking forward to noir, but if you were picking your dream anthology, <laughs> I warned you about this question. You've had time to think about it. Have uh -huh. you come up with your dream anthology? Yes. Yes. I would want to do a fantasy, and that can be epic fantasy, urban fantasy whatever kind of fantasy, but a fantasy anthology built around music, the way we built one around food Ooh. for um, galactic stew, built around music and one that has to have a rock and roll lyric oh. in its title. I like that. Or a play on one. It doesn't have to be, okay. I mean, you know, it. it it, it doesn't have to be the title. If, if you want to tweak a word to make, to make a pun, that's fine. But okay. that would be something I would love. To oh, that's awesome. Oh, that would be fun to write for. Okay. <laughs>
Well, people should go support the Kickstarter. I think it's very close to making right now. It is. We are $250 or less away. I think somewhere Joshua Palmatier is chain-smoking Marlboros watching the numbers go. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's it again. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Well, perhaps by the time this is posted, uh, uh, this that will have happened. People should support uh, the anthologies because these are anthologies that are supporting open calls. And if you want new, fresh, interesting voices, if you want to find them, you should read the anthologies. If you want them to keep appearing in fiction, you should support the anthologies. So win-win, no matter what. And you should definitely look for noir when it comes out. Absolutely. All right. David, thank you so much. This has been terrific. And Thank you, Kat. Uh, I appreciate it. Take care. Talk to you soon.